in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed yeah hallelujah we apologize for being late we're just coming from a journey hallelujah i bless god because it's causing our eyes to see let me see how many of you have been blessed and transformed in this place sincerely from your heart hallelujah we have a goal we have a target not that which was set by man but that which was given by God to equip the Bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors he said for the edification the building up of the saints that they will be equipped to do the work of the ministry to the end that all of us will come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ to the end that we are matured not tossed through and fro by every wind of doctrine hallelujah and by the grace of God is always our desire to make your two or three hours that is spent every Friday worthwhile hallelujah we are committed under heaven to ensure that there is no week you come and go back the same hallelujah that you equip something not just say okay i was blessed no that you can see that you are coming into greater alignment hallelujah and so i welcome everyone inside and outside i'll be doing a brief teaching and then we'll pray <clears throat> hallelujah now there's a series that we have um but then by the leading of the spirit i'll just touch on one area of it hallelujah i'm going to be talking on kingdom economics kingdom economics that's the whole series hallelujah kingdom economics kingdom economics is the whole series but tonight i'll briefly be talking on financial freedom we've not done any teaching that has to do with finances and so it's very important hallelujah it's our desire in this place to see people who are not just spiritually fit listen it's our desire to not just see people who can pray in tongues and heal the sick and command miracles hallelujah it's our desire to see people who are economically empowered hallelujah so that they can become a blessing to their people how many of you will agree with me that most of the quarrels and the fight in our homes and our societies are directly or indirectly related to money many of you your parents begin to frown the moment you talk about money when you talk about god and his kingdom and rapture they are happy hallelujah it reminds them that this world is a temporary place the moment you talk about school fees or anything they get very sad hallelujah i'll not go into detail because of our time i want us to really take out time and pray so i'll just be sharing these principles very important hallelujah one of the most tragic things that has happened to the youth in this country nigeria is that the fathers or the educators those who claim to be the models for us to follow especially in the social and educational system have not been able to understand by the spirit the ways of god and the patterns that lead to true success i follow me now and so from the universities the polytechnics the institutions they teach and train people according to curriculums 
that if we are not careful may not be relevant in our generation hallelujah and so many people are raised and trained and unfortunately the family that is supposed to be the unit of education hallelujah many people say charity begins at home not just charity every true thing should start at home are you listening to me and many of us did not get the right training and the right building from our homes many of us had to learn everything most things that we know today from the media or our peers and and some of these things have been devastating they have put a mindset in us that will lead us to failure if not aligned by the spirit of god hallelujah especially for the concept of wealth increase prosperity finances there has been a a misconception it grieves my heart every time i have the opportunity to talk with people especially tongue-talking christians concerning the subject of finances it's amazing how we keep blaming the church over misuse of funds and other things and the leaders the five-fold ministers do not realize that it's a responsibility to teach can i tell you something do not accuse any man of anything you have not taught him are you listening to me if i've not taught you how to be polite i have no right to accuse you of being impolite is that correct that's why the bible says the days of our ignorance god overlooks and so it takes knowledge and understanding the average youth in this country has this as his financial paradigm i write jam go to the university try to do well and get good grades pray in tongues as much as i can call forth as much as i can then when i'm in final year i begin to be nice to different uncles and relatives and we aspire and look forward to nmpc and shell and chevron and everywhere only to graduate and face an endless cycle of heartbreaks and disappointment there's such lamentation you read it in the papers you read it everywhere many churches are full of tongue talking believers who are poor cannot help themselves cannot help the government cannot help the society and then the interesting thing is many people have tried using their own principles to achieve god's result and the frustration has led to all kinds of demonic and satanic messages about wealth and prosperity the most common being that wealth and prosperity is demonic is satanic is bad and it leads people to hell hallelujah and the man of god who is preaching that message has his jeep waiting for him outside the man of god who is preaching that message has many prophetic offerings to be given to him after service the man who is preaching that message and misleading people has his children in the best of schools are you following me the man who is preaching that demonic message has millions stacked in his account the man who is preaching that demonic message has a sumptuous meal baked chicken kebab all kinds of things in his house and then we begin to teach and cripple the body another erroneous mindset is the concept that wealth and prosperity is carnality materialism and so many believers have said take the world give me jesus and then the bible says for God so loved that world. Hallelujah. And, and so we are, we are giving ourselves an alignment. How many of you have been taught comprehensively in your university or polytechnic or school anything about financial education? Nobody. Over 95% of us, if at all, um if not more than that did not learn things like tithing and giving from our families is that correct that's terrible and so we have a responsibility not just to teach us to pray in tongues and to release the kingdom and the power and the glory of god but to become economically empowered and let me tell you something you will never never attain mastery in any area until you understand the laws that govern that area are you following me now 
Many of our parents are languishing. People are crying. Recession, recession. People are packing up. Yet in the midst of it, like Goshen and the land of Egypt, where there is darkness and people are dying, there is light in another place. And can I tell you something? We will be wicked people if we do not teach you on economic empowerment because you know what i've seen more believers backslide because of money than as a result of sickness or cultism and other things i've seen more ladies give themselves because of money am i am i ministering to someone tonight we trivialize it as if it's not a spiritual issue i've shared it here i'll never forget some years ago when a lady shared with me how her mother was forced to sleep with the manager of her company because they were stranded and it happened with the permission of the father now please keep quiet be don't be there god forbid before you roll your hand over your head sit down quietly get your notebook otherwise you'll be liable of doing the same thing i need you to know that the parents of this dear lady were not stupid people there is a way you how many of you have seen your parents do things that you know this is not them the constraint that the present recession a true apostolic ministry must learn to address the societal issues at the moment any true apostolic ministry cannot shy away from the realities down ground how many of you do not know that the world is in a recession let me see your hands hallelujah banks have been matched how many of you know banks are, i mean banks that used to be the confidence of everyone ha. and we must be taught the ways of god otherwise we will sustain casualties in our lives but when we know of the way of god when men say there is a casting down we will say there is a lifting up there are many of us who have been praying in tongues praying in tongues and our families hate us all that you do when they're having a family meeting is for you to start the prayer and close it every discussion in that family doesn't concern you you are trying to legislate the counsel of god and they look at you and say what have you done in this family the church is where we are today not necessarily because we are not praying in tongues we have not been able to come up with a level of empowerment that will affect society are you listening to me we still have the church running up and down at government houses begging for loans begging for schemes begging for all kinds of things the church has turned to be beggars begging everybody for everything hallelujah as a result of not understanding the laws that god has put many men of god have become slaves to the wealthy people in their ministries the people have become the holy spirit hallelujah and tonight very briefly i want to share on a few principles hear me brothers and sisters i say it with all humility these are not things we read from books these are principles that we are living by and as many of you who can humble yourself to say you know let me tell you something like a great man of god bishop Oedipo, will say only fools doubt proof are you listening to me archbishop benson idahosa said you have no right to criticize a man of a thing until you have done twice what that man has done isn't it amazing how many people have written books about finances they have they have lined tapes about finances and there is nothing in their life that shows that they know what they are doing let me tell you something if you truly know what you are doing with time some results you show is that correct if you are living in holiness with time the results you show if you are working in god's principles the end of faith is a manifestation that must appear unto all hallelujah and so this is a workshop really we'll do it very fast and then we'll pray i'm talking on financial freedom the series is kingdom economics i'll just touch on one of the subtopics and then we pray help us lord in the name of jesus you don't break listen to me look up look up look up you don't break free from poverty by coming to kneel down and say man of god pray for me let me tell you something it's not going to bring sustainable deliverance are you listening to me there are many of our families that have finished all their money because they are trying to tap into everything the greatest way to tap into the abundance of god is first to know his ways hallelujah 
many believers have become so lazy that we believe that our seeds can do everything for us thank you jesus so what is financial freedom please write please write i beg you write something write something write something i remember a man of god pastor chris was sharing something and he said that a a very successful businessman was speaking in a seminar just training students hallelujah and then he was speaking on certain ways to be financially free and when he began to speak the students were objecting and he noticed there was a student who was always saying excuse sir this is not what our lecturer taught us and then at a point the man got agitated and he said young man stand up he said is your lecturer a millionaire he said no he said are you a millionaire he said no he said sit down i am a millionaire i'm telling you what the market is doing keep your theory and keep all your old junk and listen to me sounds like many believers to me the moment they begin to talk open to deuteronomy they say ah power to get how has it changed your life it, there's nothing that irritates me as an arrogant person who has no result hallelujah and we have lots of them in the body we claim we know one thing i have learned is that when i see someone that has something and has seen a dimension that i've not seen i humble myself and press into it hallelujah many people make noise about finances say all kinds of things yet is telling on people we have more people telling lies doing all kinds of things in the body because of finances but the bible says i wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers don't let the devil deceive you and say your father is rich your mother is rich hallelujah thank you jesus what is financial freedom very quickly financial freedom now look up please can i have someone for illustration just anybody aaron i like using you god bless you now look at me the average believer in church please look up the average believer in church believes that he or she will be rich the moment you have a business idea plus capital to execute that idea how many of you have thought like that i'm telling you tonight is not true that's the first mindset you need to change many of us have been praying oh god fifty thousand, and my life will be changed you have watched too much advert in the, in, in, in the media says 50,000 can change your life and who wants to be a millionaire and so on and so forth and many people pray and say God this idea if only you can give me 100,000 and every time you are praying God is leading you to the world and you are saying God you are a wicked person can I tell you the truth be honest those of you who got the money why are you still not rich because you said if I can just 20,000 to start that recharge card business give me 6 months God has given you 3 years nothing has changed terrible mindset by people so you see people running to banks for loans many of our parents many ministries although they are tongue talking they are living in this kind of error because we believe that financial freedom is equal to a business structure plus capital many of you will thank god tonight for not bringing the money because you would have blown it wasted it and been angry with yourself hallelujah oh god hundred thousand for that restaurant and see what i'll do you really think so follow me tonight he said johnny at the end of it we will pray and ask god to help us hallelujah financial freedom listen to me financial freedom is financial abundance right having abundance plus the time the time to be blessed by that abundance plus the peace of mind to live with it that's financial freedom financial freedom is not financial abundance what many people have been pursuing is abundance that's not enough that's the kind of thing that leads people to hellfire 
financial freedom is not just abundance it's abundance plus time look up how many of you will agree with me that there are many rich people who are not financially free because they don't have time their children have become strangers in their homes many people's spiritual life has gone down the drain in the quest to look for money money has become the order of the day money 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 every time and after yelling and yelling about the money they will never get it so financial freedom is not just having abundance no financial freedom is abundance plus the time you are never financially free if you do not have time many nigerians are far from financial freedom because they lack time and then peace of mind the word of the lord declares that the blessing of the lord it make it rich and added no sorrow i've seen too many sorrowful people claiming to be laughing in their jeeps but their sorrow will kill them their degree their sorrow is directly proportional to the wealth they are having hallelujah a man who used to trust his wife now separates he puts a partition in the house because he became a millionaire and he says young woman no longer my wife this is your room from today henceforth and you go and make a bed with a wardrobe inside and all kinds of things sorrow that's what the bible calls there are many of our parents that till today they are still suspecting us you left home angry because you fought with them they are suspecting that you are the one that stole the money and you are not even aware what kind of life is that sorrow upon sorrow begin to suspect everybody including your children that's not financial freedom that's not the desire that's not if god wanted us to get blessed that way then we will never be able to attain the things that he has called us unto another point i want you to write is that financial freedom was not designed to be a lifetime pursuit get this brothers and sisters hear me you are not supposed to spend your entire life trying to be blessed you will never be able to accomplish your assignment that way satan has distracted us with this ugly mindset that all about our life is looking for money it has become the determinant of our jobs it has become the determinant of our geographical location has become the determinant of several things a man at 70 is still begging to look for job not because he likes it he's still pursuing money no sir god did not design this system that way and can i tell you something about about wealth those who don't sit down to learn the principles will begin to envy and get angry at those who are paying the price to attain it and let me tell you if you don't sit down and take this serious tomorrow you'll be angry at your friends and your colleagues that's why god is bringing this our way are you guessing blessed tonight there are two important factors that must be at work in your life for you to attain financial freedom and that's where we are starting tonight i love doing this teaching timeless principles number one why are people poor why are many believers poor why won't god just open up the heavens and flood it with cash why are many tongue-talking believers why are some of us still struggling with our school fees our parents are still struggling they've been trying to build houses for donkey years it has led them into all kinds of things we have called all kinds of people to come to our house to collect the remaining money that is left all in the name of praying with with all kinds of candles and garbages in our house the bible says that they know not neither do they understand he said so the earth is out of course i'm trying to provoke someone tonight to the end that we will pray hallelujah number one you will never become financially free not according to the kingdom's way if you do not see the need that's the first point there are many believers who do not see the need there are many ministries who do not see the need every time they raise the subject of financial education you see this spiritual atmosphere that people put and feel no 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 don't we are pressing into god there are new dimensions 
And let me tell you something. There's an error I've seen in the body. Many believers just believe that you just keep praying in tongues and you are praying and then one day the heavens will be open over you. Let's finish up this, this story. And you'll find out that many people are going to be disappointed after 10 years of serving God diligently. Question. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Is that correct? Look up. How many of us can bear me witness that there are many of our parents who are campus fellowship presidents, some of them are pastors, they've been praying in tongues for years and they are still poor. Can anybody agree with me on that? Why is that so? There are even many of our families that have not missed out on tithing and giving for once, but they are still poor. How many of you have been tithing, tithing, tithing? It's just that you don't want to say it. But it has been paining you because it looks like something is wrong somewhere. And can I tell you something? The error is not from God. It's certainly not from God. Open our eyes tonight, Lord. You must see the need. So many believers do not see the need. Every time you are talking, they have this air of, ah, I'm a lady. I'm going to get married to a rich man. I've, I've made up my mind. Let any poor man carry his, his, his promises and come close to me and see what I'll do with him. There's no manifestation. Pack your load and go. Wrong mindset. Got it from culture. Got it from films. Got it from all kinds of things. You must see the need. What does a need do to you? Number one, a need creates dissatisfaction. The Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You can never break through a process until you get dissatisfied. Hallelujah. You must get dissatisfied. You must get dissatisfied. Get dissatisfied with the fight and the quarrel that happens between your father and your mother at all times. Get dissatisfied. The Bible says through desire. Proverbs 18 verse 1. A man having separated himself, he intermeddled with all wisdom. There must be a desire. When you see the need, it creates a sense of responsibility. So many people are blaming the government. We blame our parents. We blame the government. Ah, they are chopping our money. They stopped giving us scholarship. If that they were giving, my mind would have changed. Oh, my, my lifestyle and all of that. I would not have been sleeping around. Calm down. You truly begin to break through in any area when you stop blaming people and accept responsibility. Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus, please say it like you mean it. In the name of Jesus, I stop blaming people. I take responsibility over my financial destiny. One more time, say, I take responsibility over my financial destiny. Yes. A need brings you to a point where you, you stand to take responsibility. Many of us are waiting for our parents to die. We are praying and anticipating. On their deathbed, we come to visit them, but we can't wait for them to die because we are waiting for something they call inheritance. And before a man would die, the, the in-laws and the parents are already arguing about how to share things. Number two, or still, still on that point of the need. A need breaks every limitation. The moment you see a need for something, limits will be broken in your life. Hallelujah. How many of you have gone for lectures in the rain? Let me see your hands. Ladies, how many of you have exposed your hair to the rain, but you still didn't stop? You just ran for lectures. Why? When you see a need, you will not see limitations again. So many people see limitations. And the reason is because they have not seen a need. We are waiting for the day we inherit wealth from our parents. My father told me, as soon as I'm graduating, a Lexus will be waiting for me. And one two-bedroom I've been eyeing. And your whole life is built on that mirage. The word of God declares, hear me. Woe unto any man. Who puts his strength in a man that man can be anybody your father 
your mother you know that song um your father may let you down it's not because he's a wicked man your mother may let you down even you yourself you will let yourself down the best and the greatest of any man is still a man i told myself i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence i i i gladly retired from putting my strength in men hallelujah hallelujah so the first the first factor is what you must see the need say after me i see a need to be financially free number two when you have seen the need the second point is you will go for knowledge the second point is to go for knowledge you will never become financially free just by guessing and stumbling your way into it a great man said something he said if you wake up and find yourself rich be sure you were not sleeping hallelujah many of us have this mindset that oh god one day one day we have been receiving things that are hanging in the realm of the spirit for donkey years but the bible says let it be done in the earth as it is in the heaven that means it is possible that although a thing is in the heavens but it cannot be done in the earth hallelujah go for knowledge and the first phase of going for knowledge are you getting my points the first phase undergoing for knowledge is to change your mindset change your mindset we'll talk on that right now when you have seen the need and come to a point where you say look nobody in my lineage and my family has been able to bless anybody all i inherited was what people call generational curses that's what many of us came to know you just knew that nothing has been working in your life now god has done everything by the revelation of his word and by the reality of your position in christ he has brought you to a position where you realize that all of these ordinances have been nailed what are you going to leave for your own children hallelujah i am convinced that my entire generation is blessed because of me bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed change your mindset change your mindset change your mindset the difference between let me show you something proverbs 22 verse 2 i believe proverbs 22 can someone read please someone read very quickly then let me have two people i need someone who looks like a rich man come on help me i mean someone to start <laughs> all right start here hallelujah aaron you can stand here listen listen to this very interesting scripture all of you look up go ahead the rich the rich and poor meet and together. the poor they meet together where in this big earth it says what the lord, the lord is, the is the maker of them all what kind of scripture is that he said the rich and the poor they all meet in the same place he said god is the maker of them all look up the bible never said god is the maker of them so God didn't make them so. He made them. They made, they separated themselves. Look up. There is a difference between the rich and the poor. And the difference is not money. Write it. Burn it into your head. I'm shouting so that it will enter your spirit. The difference between the rich and the poor is not naira and cobble. Believe me. change your mindset under knowledge hallelujah okay so watch this call this guy the rich god forbid this is just for hallelujah call this guy the poor are you listening to me look at this the basic difference between the rich and the poor is what their mindset say after me their mindset so the difference between where you are right now no matter how tongue-talking you are and where god wants you to be financially is what repeat after me my mindset don't be ashamed of it this is a training ground say my mindset i don't care what excuse you have to give 
let me tell you there is no situation you are in right now that someone has not gotten to a worse situation and conquered it whether it's that your parents are late whether it's that you were born your the, the map of your village is not in nigeria that's irrelevant are you listening to me so we are going to examine the mindsets please get this there is something the rich do that make them rich there is something the poor do that keeps them poor are you getting blessed tonight number one the rich accept responsibility while the poor do not accept responsibility look at our society and see why people are poor all we are saying give us now and people lead themselves with placards how much to two thousand and they stand from morning till night go to offices of influential people and see a row of people waiting to seek for favor from morning till night say oh god well done no i've been trying to i was wondering if it was possible to see and the man said mm, i'm busy the poor the rich hates the poor and they say leave me i say oh god well done no. and you see the guy running and his and his children now, how many of you have seen your parents do that kind of thing i'll never forget when we used to rear goats we never ate one never suffered for it did everything and and where were the goats going government workers as i was carrying the last sets of goats it will i it pained me because the bible says a, 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 a worker is worthy of his wages <laughs> you work so hard only to make the rich richer isn't that amazing the poor work from morning till night while they are working the rich are playing them like a chess what you people call your job is someone's company and the person is crossing his leg and playing the economy of nations like a chess and the poor are running you work so hard as soon as you make your money you take it to the market and you come back poor again only to wait for another month when will it end The poor work so hard so hard and take the money to the rich so what's their difference number one this guy accepts that i'm responsible for my finances yes my parents didn't try yes the government didn't try but i take responsibility this guy is accusing this and saying hadibi is my uncle my uncle god that child abba i don't know work here you think so And we are praying my father's brother sister's cousin is the commissioner and that guy never calls god punish him with this hallelujah number two this is one of the biggest point between the rich and the poor as you write it underline it the rich have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification paying the price today to enjoy the blessings tomorrow the poor they don't like delaying instant gratification sharp sharp now let's drop today and die tomorrow that's the mindset of many nigerians that's why we like all kinds of things get rich quick this and that there's one way bring one thousand go under the bridge in the evening and come i'll give you this we like things that don't have processes hallelujah but the bible says seed time harvest hallelujah so the rich know how to delay instant gratification i've said it everywhere that's why i love Igbo people oh no no come on don't think what you think i'm thinking I said this during kingdom world summit come on i was innocent <laughs> hallelujah amen because they have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification you see a young man they just give him scholarship fifty thousand, and then he carries the bb thing blackberry forty thousand out of fifty thousand what you have home and abroad 
Give me your ping number, your ping ping that is driving people crazy, especially ladies. All around, give me this. It looks like that's a happening thing. Give me Blackberry. And you squeeze life out of your parents. You must give me that 40,000. They say we are traveling to, to Cameroon. You have not gone for how many years? You have been gathering Cameroon money. Then you finally buy the Blackberry. And then you don't have the amount to be recharging this every month. Say, sorry, what's wrong? Say, eh, this phone, you know, all these kind of things. I hope to change one soon. There are so many people who have put themselves under stress because our concept of finances is that get, spend, just get and spend. And we guys know how to do that. Hey, guys, I don't hammer. Oh, yeah. And all the psycho fans who are out to finish your money will follow you. Then you go to Peter's. Say, oh, yeah, help yourself, Jerry. Can I tell you something? No matter how much tongues you pray, God will never empower you beyond your level of managing his resources. Never. God will never empower you beyond the level to which you can manage his resources. Because the earth is the Lord's. Doesn't belong to you. Are you getting blessed? Instant gratification. How many of us have been feasting on the seeds that God has given us? Can I tell you something? This is God's principle. God will tell you, Selena, run down there and you will meet a great harvest. When you run to that farm, you will see a bag of seeds with wisdom to turn that seed into a harvest. You say, Lord, where is the harvest? God say, right there. That is it. Many people do not understand God's system. And that's why we get disappointed. Help us, Lord. Number three. The poor spend and spend while the rich save and invest i cannot tell you how i feel sad over many church people we know how to shout and call forth wealth and that's important if you have not been calling forth money brothers and sisters believe me get set you are violating a serious kingdom law and you are going to remain poor say ah when my uncle has told me in the come okay we have warned ourselves in this place to stop depending on men. Doesn't mean that God will not use men to bless you. Hallelujah. The poor spend and spend. Isn't it amazing that those who are the richest in this environment are the ones who are modest and visionary. Those who are the ones loud and doing all of these things, they really don't have much. The pressure of trying to prove a point. I said it during Kingdom Wealth Summit. I was, I was taking an extra from these many ladies. You are changing your weave on every week. Giving an impression like you're a multi-millionaire. And you know you are not. Let me tell you something about pretending a status you have not yet attained. The day your money finishes, you will be forced to still maintain that status. Although you don't have the means. You have sworn hellfire for anybody that eats in Zinc House. Now your fortune has gone. Your father has told you because you are stubborn, you will not give you money again. You are hungry. You are dying. The Holy Spirit is advising your guy to enter this zinc house. <laughs> and you have given yourself a mindset. How can I at my level? Not so. Look up. Let me say this. Are you getting blessed tonight? Look up. Please let me correct something. Money can come through favor. In fact, according to God's economic system, all right, there are many ways that money comes. Remember 2009, 10, 10, Kingdom Wealth Summit, money cometh. Hallelujah. Money can come through favor. Let me give you an instance. God can tell me, say, Josh, so 10,000 naira to Ruben's life. That's favor, right? Strangers can come and feed your flock. That's favor. Listen to me. What we do not understand is that money does not grow by favor. Money can come by favor. Money cannot grow by favor. There is only one biblical way of increase and multiplication. Say after me, investment. Say it. There is only one biblical way 
of multiplication matthew chapter 25 matthew chapter 25 i'll try to really really be fast quickly let's turn there matthew 25 thank you lord jesus christ how many of us are seeing some light over our finances right now thank you lord matthew 25 if you are there say amen okay verse 14 matthew 25 14 inside and outside make sure god has your attention tonight this is very important for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto them his good unto one he gave what five talents talent means money many people say it's gift no it's not gift it's money exactly that to another he gave what to another he gave what he says according to his ability and straightway he took his journey hallelujah read verse 16 everybody one to read hold on he went and invested the word traded there is he did business are you following me who gave them the talent what did the master expect them to do with it multiply it correct and the bible didn't say they hold they held their hands together say, are you ready oh yeah fire and then they started bible says they went and did business are you listening to me help us oh lord okay verse 19 after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them 20 and so he that received five talents came and brought what how did he multiply it did you see that he multiplied it again are, are you are you following me the word of god teaches us the principles i hope you know he said the kingdom of god is likened unto this is giving us the economic principle of the kingdom it says lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained does that look like an investment language i have gained doesn't look to me like a prayer language beside them five talents more verse 21 his lord said unto him what so what does god tell those who multiply his resources okay let's see how good you have been reading your bibles thou has been what so he calls it faithfulness over a few things i will make you ruler over what are you seeing how to increase in the kingdom i will make you ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord 22 he also that had received two talents came and then 23 let's read on and then he said that he also gained you know and um verse 24 looks like many of us are you ready now read then he which had received the one talent came and said lord i knew that thou art a hard man stop are you seeing the mindset of the poor they always give excuses always give excuses said lord i knew that thou was a hard man doing what reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw 25 and i was afraid fear and went and hid my talent in the earth hold on isn't it amazing that he put the talent in the earth and it didn't grow i thought you put seeds in the earth and they grow but this guy did something to his talent and although it was under the earth it didn't grow lo there thou hast that is thine 26 listen to what god is telling many tongue-talking believers and this is why we remain where we are in spite of the great future hallelujah god is saying that's beautiful but one thing thou lackest thou wicked ah look at the kinds of words the only other place this language was used was those who healed in his name and did all of this it says wicked and what slothful new testament language english students lazy lazy what although you can be a servant you can be a lazy one thou knewest that where i sowed not 
and gather where I have not sown. Verse 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I would have received mine with usury. In other words, according to God's system, the worst form of investment is putting your money in the bank. Interesting. He said you would have at least done that one. Hallelujah. He said what? Take therefore. This is a fearful scripture. Are you seeing why the wealth of many of our parents have disappeared? Although they are Christians. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to who? This wealth conversion that many people are saying is leaving the unbelievers. Some believers will be shocked that it will also disappear from their own hands. It's in the Bible. All three were called servants. Yet it was collected from one and added unto another. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's hurry up. The poor go for results. They like results. They don't want to know the process. Give me fish. Don't teach me how to fish. There are so many of us that have been blessed by wealthy parents. Never for once have we asked and said, Daddy, Mommy, I'm of age now. Can you begin to teach me? Can you show me? You have been very successful in your finances. I've never cried for school fees. I've never begged. Can you teach me? What did you know that brought you this game? Many of us are always happy. We have been privileged to be with people that can bless us. We have never taken out time. Hallelujah. The poor always like results. That's why many people in the village are always fighting those in the city. They are always waiting for those in the city to come. And then they dance around your car expecting what? Give them something. Then you give them 1,000 and they finish it. Or some of our relatives that are causing trouble in our homes. You give them 10,000 today, they call you after two weeks. They say, oh, guy, it has finished. Of course. Say, send another one. Then when you don't send, they say, this wicked guy. She means your wife that has carried you away. She's a witch. Where will we end all this nonsense? Amazing that it happens in the church too. Hallelujah. The rich keep learning. A rich man is not interested in results. All of this flamboyancy that people do. You see someone with a jeep and you're like, hey, hey, hey I want that jeep anyhow, anyhow. No. There are too many people that are after results. The results are inevitable when you know the principles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The poor depend on luck. Have you ever heard people say that thing? How? Nigerians are lucky. Oh, it's my luck. Oh. Say MTN just came to build a mass on this person's land. He just bought one plot of land. MTN came to beg him and they are giving him 300,000 naira every month for using his plot of land. When the Holy Spirit was telling two of you, go and buy that land or go and do this. The other person will say, Abba, I will buy, I will buy a car. You bought your golf as you were going out, somebody jammed it. It's still parked there. sorry if i offend you tonight it's important it's necessary for us to enter hallelujah so are you getting the mindset now will you agree with me right now that financial freedom is not just having abundance i mean not just having a business structure and money to do it do you agree with me there are many people you open your shop and eat everything in your shop by yourself i see people do that just to and just carry something and, and then you are balancing the account and you go and meet as a prophet demons they are, my things are just disappearing you have poultry pieces of, ah, carry 10 chickens give them now you, you forget that those things are reducing the point you come and call your wife madam come what is happening in this poultry then you see your son simply because he has not been smiling. You say, Come here. You have said joining bad friends, Abby. Go and bring the remaining. Your son is what is there? Before he talks, you are giving him. Look, 
this is this is you are laughing but this is the story of some of us here but god wants us to change so let's hurry up change your mindset after changing your mindset realize that god's economic system works on principles oh help us holy spirit that we get this it's not guesswork it works on definite principles hallelujah i'm going to talk about just three laws very quickly three laws number one the law of value right the law of value the law of value take it seriously the law of value look up please look up please i want everybody to look up this guy sells recharge card for instance is that correct um let's say this guy sells electronics look up because i do not produce what they sell if i want to get it from them how do i get it i exchange it so who will be getting the money those who have the product is that correct the law of value you must add value to yourself and you must have something to offer otherwise you will remain poor wealth is for those who have something to offer what do you have to offer that was a question the prophet asked the woman in second kings chapter 4 he said what do you have in your house the law of value look up please i see so many believers who pray that's wonderful confess god's word that's wonderful but i do not see us investing in knowledge to know the principles i want to provoke all of us now inside and outside how many of you this year have bought books on finances by kingdom people books on finances let me see your hands don't feel bad you will not go to hell so do you see that it's not god's fault that we are where we are come on no nobody is condemning you tonight we're in a school is that okay we are provoking ourselves hallelujah the law of value let me say something i respect although i am sorry because their wealth is soon going to leave them all of the people who are not wealthy by kingdom principles but these people sit day and night this is what the rich do the rich always get knowledge and the poor are just searching for anything they can search where to patch and manage they were managing here and then the rich have the knowledge of the system many of us do not refine ourselves look up the bible makes us to understand in esther chapter 2 that although esther was already a beautiful lady are you listening to me was she qualified to stand before the king although she was beautiful but she needed to do what develop herself there are many of you that have been given potentials and talents by god every meeting you go you still see them shouting this issue of your talent and your potential and the giftings of god in your life and many of us have not taken it seriously hallelujah the bible says the gift of a man makes room have you read that in your bible the gift of a man makes room for him steve please come hallelujah what's his name who called him strings his father competence gave him that name hallelujah are you following me now i knew when we were roommates with steve and would come and steve would be rehearsing on this guitar he had tapes of many people who had gone ahead of him are you following me now and he would rehearse and build himself that time nobody knew him as it were but he was building how many of you remember david david had potentials but he remained in the wilderness what was he doing in the wilderness he was building many of us get up with our own refined talents and we are angry why the world is not rushing towards us you come to stand to present a special number and what the keyboardist is playing and what you are singing is different the keyboardist is playing and then you just raise your song and you are not even aware that you have made a mistake you are not even aware that you have missed the key then you say i'm producing a debut album how in the world will i buy your album am i provoking you 
it's only in the church that we find people who are not competent and think praying in tongues will cover for incompetence go for competence that's what the law of value says train yourself equip yourself by the grace of god with all humility one of the reasons why we are enjoying good sound and all of this thing is because the people in the department are training and building themselves consistently how many of you have been blessed by the worship team how many of you have been blessed by the media people dio please stand up dio just came back hallelujah he had been on training with um, frontline media academy hosting some of the best media people around the nation for two weeks after that he went to lagos to have another training does he pray in tongues answer me has he been attending miracle service why did he go for training his article was recently um i think so he was telling me one of his articles i hope you know last year he got the best student journalist in nigeria why in the world will he not get it the best student journalist hallelujah i need you to know that beyond tongues with all humility to god be the glory but one of the reasons why things are working for us is we have paid the price to delay instant gratification and build are you listening to me there are so many things many of you may not know let me give you an instance with one person how many of you know that Ejimi is a chartered wealth manager don't you think we are just some bunch of visionless pastors who have struggled and tried i pass here nowhere i pass here nowhere i just say well let's just quietly do ministry hallelujah go for knowledge provoke yourself stop looking for results right now go for knowledge and the results will follow you stop looking for results and no no go for knowledge hallelujah day and night when you come to our house i say it with all humility you can ask those who come around day and night either we are studying digging in the word or we are online researching on things or buying books or god jordan is here ask him he's the one who supplies books for us as soon as he comes back from lagos he's calling us there is this book there is that book go for knowledge those who are above are those who go for knowledge favor is when preparation meets opportunity many of you have not prepared yourself you will disappoint yourself in the days of opportunity esther prepared herself for one year and when the opportunity came she took advantage of it bishop td jakes wrote a book maximizing the moment we must learn how to maximize the moment hallelujah the law of value sit down build yourself God has told you you're going to have an event management and a catering a catering institute how many world top caterers do you know how many do you know in Nigeria if you cannot list five proficient people in the field you believe God will bless you with I am convinced you are not serious hallelujah are you listening to me you want to do interior decor or you want to do fashion if you cannot list five proficient people who have made it in your field you are not serious at all hallelujah you want to sing you've written 36 songs and you want to break them into three and release all the albums who are the christian artists you know in the world you don't know what's the latest album by kotka you don't know i don't care all i know is that we have a church with large people there are plenty of people in Koinonia. If I release this album now, Abba, it will sell. Hallelujah. Let me say something with all humility. Hope is here. She bakes and she really aspires to bake very well. I have watched her improve. Hallelujah. I have watched her. I remember a time when she came and met me and we sat down and began to talk and to build ourselves. How many of you are building yourselves i'm not supposed to be saying this but i'm just saying it to provoke you to challenge you hallelujah how many people are building themselves 
Mukhtar is here, the chief usher. He has been building himself. He runs a laundry. He runs a laundry as a student. He's the one who launders our clothes. Kenny runs a laundry. Building themselves. And what many of us do is to sit down. You are gisting from morning till night. Let me tell you something. That kind of mindset is the mindset that has caused many people to be disappointed. Are you getting blessed tonight? So sit down. Tell yourself, sit down. Say it, sit down. Say, settle down. And build yourself. The law of value. Go for knowledge. Go for excellence. Be competent. I made up my mind that there is no field. God has asked me to rule and reign that I will be ashamed. Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman we only use it for school and university. What happens when you graduate? Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number two. The law of investments. I've said it. The only way money grows is by investment many of us have no knowledge of the financial vehicles that are available many of us do not know highest what many of us know about investment is that you can have a small shop open you have your gary indomie with one put your little with one and 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 add add shampoo and and then that's all I know it's unfortunate our educational system is not teaching us but how many of us have made it a point of duty to go out of the box and help yourself hallelujah are you getting blessed the only way money grows is when you invest can i tell you something many ministries are poor today not because they don't have partners they are always running on deficit you collect one million as your offering your budget is one million how in the world do you plan to be rich that's why we have people begging every day ministers begging come help me now are you could not see my life am i not begging <laughs> i'm sorry if i sound arrogant i'm touching a topic that i think is very important hallelujah very important the law of investment and so what's your assignment sit down this night and throughout this week begin to find out all the business vehicles that are available for you that you can start with your 1000 2000 tolu please stand up i remember i'm saying it uh, um i remember when she used to meet me and talk and we used to talk about different business things she was really tired and said she wanted god to help her today how many of you know the recharge card this thing just in front of chapel that's her own it belongs to her she's the owner today has he reduced your prayer points sweetheart no no, no i mean has he reduced your prayer points on finances well she, i'm not sure she understands what i'm saying hallelujah how many of please sit down god bless you how many of us go to god and the time you are supposed to use and bless him you plan to pray for six hours five hours is crying and begging i say, do this thing for me now god you are able to by the grace of god one of the things that has accelerated our spiritual life is we have minimal time talking about money in the place of prayer so i can go to the place of prayer and say i hail you most high you can't be worshiping god like that when there's fire burning under you hallelujah number three the law of accumulation i'll stop there the law of accumulation the law of accumulation simply put big is small plus small plus small plus small plus small i can I, I keep i keep laughing at people who are waiting and wishing you ask them they bring their budget 
and all of this, say how much? Say 10 million naira. Say I have faith. Say fine. You have been chopping all the 10 million in the little 5,000 5, and 10, 10,000 you have been blowing. You see, there's a 20,000. Oh, Jare, you will not do all of these things. And then you go and spend it on useless things. Do you not realize that 1 million naira is 1,000 naira in 1,000 places? Hello? Is that correct? Let me give you an assignment. Go to the bank and tell them to give you a total of all the money that's entered your account since you open it you see how many estates you would have built by now where did the estates go to your trainers or your 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 t-shirts that you do as if me bend down boutique me new creation in christ man really what in the world is wrong with you to go and take that conserve it a day will come you can own a boutique stop trying to prove points those you are trying to prove a point to they are not even looking at you yeah. hallelujah once upon a time we ate in community market we are happy about it today and we are glad for the transition hallelujah learn to appreciate your transitions don't be ashamed of it someone comes and he sees you at that joint that daraka joint where they sell akara and this is oh yeah looking as if you don't don't you know it you just sit there in the smoke no problem say mama 13 era add 15 era on and you are praying lord this is not my future it's just a journey lord this is not my future somebody says ah pastor yeah no problem at least i'm not defrauding anybody in church There was a time we used to drink tea at this Meshai joint. You don't know. It doesn't look like it now. Oh, there was that glorious time. And Jimmy was at the forefront of it. And Indomie, they'll tie it for you. They'll fry it. You'll not even do well. They'll just turn it. I know it all. Oh. Don't be deceived by this suit. We have been there. So what is wrong if you are there now? Why are you embarrassed about it? You are spending two two thousand in mr biggs every day where are you going with it you are not producing anything there's no inflow but you are spending money doesn't make sense hallelujah we don't eat if there's no fish in our food every day 100, 100 naira is going on 300 naira you are eating in cafeteria purely and you know that there's not much coming in the law of accumulation says that you begin to save small by small. The journey of a thousand miles begins with what? Ah, George, it's only 10,000 they give me per month. Find out the person who collects 2,000 per session. Who has been saving and has 20,000 now. Warren Buffett, one of the world's richest person. Hallelujah. He was asked a simple question and he was said ah how are you so rich like this he said he had been investing and he had allowed his investments to grow for over 38 years and they said what is your worst mistake in life he started investing at age eight he said my worst investment is i started investing late how old are you happy birthday how old are you hallelujah is this a call for us tonight is this a call for us to sit up many of us are on steady allowance hundred thousand fifty thousand every week yet our lives have not changed why because we are wasting it day and night and you are saying god more god will never give you more until you prove you are faithful are you listening to me until you prove you are faithful we'll have to stop here for now i hope you were able to learn something I look forward to a time when we'll, we'll take a week and we'll do a proper financial seminar. Hallelujah. Are you, are you looking forward to that time? Because it's our desire that our life will change. Do you know that if your life changes, you will give more? Many of you have a heart to give. It's just that the means is not there. How many of you feel very bad when there are projects and you truly cannot give? You feel very bad. The only way is not pray and say, Lord, those who don't have, help them to give. This is how God helps them to give. Light shines in the darkness. Rise up on your feet and let's pray.
God bless you. Go ahead and just pray in tongues for one minute. We're wrapping up tonight. Say, Lord, thank you for this knowledge. Grace to mix your word with faith. A season has come for me to change my life, change my finances. The kingdom will move forward when you're financially empowered. Your families will move forward. You will end pain and tears and tragedy in your family. The Bible says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Before I round up, let me say this. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 gives us the foundation of a believer's prosperity. Hallelujah. The foundation begins to talk about our tithe and our offerings. There are so many people here who are not faithful in tithing you're not faithful in tithing you've been hearing about your tithe a ten percent and you are you are being you're being deceived the eyes this man of god the bible says ye are cursed verse 9 please verse 9 it says ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even let's start from verse 8 please let's run to it i know we're out of time verse 8 very quickly please will a man rob god he said Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? He said what? In tithes. So if you don't tithe, you are a thief, you are a robber. So says the word of God. As a result, verse 10 or verse 9. It says, you are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye what? All the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. He said, prove me. Now here we say the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be no room enough to receive it. Verse 11. It says, and I will rebuke. This is the spiritual agency behind the poverty of many families. It's called the devourer. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time in the field thus said the lord verse 12 the last verse and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a dislike some land saith the lord of hosts there are several of us here we have been praying and fasting and we are not faithful in our tithe i like you to know that you are going to pray tonight and say lord i realize i've been unfaithful i receive grace tonight to be diligent in my tithing as you add all other laws diligent in your tithing diligent in your giving many of us are stingy and greedy the bible says there is he that scattered and increased there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty go ahead and pray say lord greed and selfishness i command it out of my life i am a giver i am a giver i am a giver i am a giver I am a giver. I am a giver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't do this, but let me provoke everyone. Please, I'd like you to bring out a seed. Bring out a seed, everybody. Please just, just hold something in your hand. Hold hand. This is for someone who, who can. I need everybody to connect with something. Who doesn't have something to hold on to? I'm serious. Who doesn't have? Come. Hallelujah. Hold on to something. Hallelujah. Please hold on to something. Who doesn't have? Let me just give one more person. We are not trying to get your money, brothers and sisters. I'd like you to bring out a seed. I want to pray for you. Don't you think, I know that there are ministers who are out to cheat people and mislead people. Please, ushers, very quickly, can we have you come up with all shooting baskets right in front? Do it quickly, please. We are out of time. We have to do this. Hallelujah very very quickly please ushers run and come hallelujah i want to pray no just hold it stand at the rows and at the eye inside and outside we are going to do that quickly please if you don't have a seed in your hand hold the hands of someone who has just connect 
Please don't be ashamed. We are very serious. Hallelujah. We are going to pray and say, Lord, we make up our minds to be diligent in tithing, diligent in giving, and diligent in abiding by this principle. Lift up your voice and pray. That's the prayer point. Grace, Kabaraka Telebogosia. In my tithe, oh God. Grace, come on, pray. In my tithe, I receive grace to be a faithful tither. I stop robbing God. Grace to be a tither. Grace to be a tither. Grace to be faithful. God will not rob you. Grace to be a tither. Now pray and say, Lord, grace to give. I break the spirit of greed. Go ahead and pray. Many of you are greedy. Many of you are stingy. That's why you will not move forward financially. Say, Lord, I break that spirit of greed. That spirit that will only withhold. Thinking God wants to cheat you. I break that spirit of greed. God is a good God. He will not rob you. Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to pray for this seed very quickly. As I pray for this seed, I'll drop it. As you drop your seed, begin to pray. All of these points, the law of value and the rest. Say, Lord, this week I sit down. Many of you, God will give you ideas. God will give you things. Don't please take it seriously. Help. Let's help our families. If they couldn't help us, let's help them. Hallelujah. Father, I pray, lift up your seed. Father, we are doing this according to the word of the Lord. I pray, Lord, that there will be an avalanche of wealth, riches, and prosperity. This is a prosperous ministry. You have blessed us with it. We have the power to prosper. Lord, there are people trusting you for school fees. There are families trusting you. They are in debt. They are in recessions. They are trusting you. Many have lost in their businesses and investments. Many are trusting you to get by. Lord, I pray that as this seed is casted prophetically, let people begin to enter unusual realms of concepts, insights, ideas. Let fear die. That fear that stops you from taking bold steps, let it die. God is with you. God is with you. You will not fail. You will not fail. Hallelujah. Now go ahead and drop your seed and begin to pray in tongues. Drop your seed and in one minute begin to pray in tongues. Please let's hurry up. We are out of time. As you drop your seed, pray in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. I am moving forward. In the name of Jesus. The grace of God is speaking for me in my finances in the name of Jesus in my finances in the name of Jesus on behalf of my family on behalf of my ministry on behalf of my business pray for your family pray for your ministry pray for your church pray for your business say Lord enough is enough enough is enough Enough is enough. Let my light break forth. Inside and outside, pray. 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 When men say there is a casting down, we'll say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. Come on, pray. Pray in the spirit. I know we're out of time, but this is important for your destiny. Pray in the spirit. Let the least among us be as great as David. Let the least among us be as great as David. Let the least among us be as great as David. Lord, we believe your word. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. Your word is yea. Your word is amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, three books to help you in your finances. 
Money will not make you rich. Money won't make you rich by Sunday Adelaja. Please buy it. It's available at the Jordan bookstore. Buy the truth. It's part of the law of value. Money won't make you rich. Sunday Adelaja. We recommend three of them. Unfair advantage. Robert Kiyosaki. Unfair advantage. Hallelujah. The covenant of wealth. Bishop David Oyedeko. Covenant of wealth. Bishop David Oyedeko. The law of prosperity. Kenneth Copeland. The law of prosperity. Kenneth Copeland. Please write it. I'll repeat it very quickly. Money won't make you rich. Sunday Adelaja. Unfair advantage by Robert Kiyosaki. I don't like many of his books, but that one book is a very powerful one. Hallelujah. The Covenant of Wealth by Bishop David Oyedeko. Hallelujah. There are many unhealthy books you should not read. They come from Satan. One of it is called the 48 Laws of Power. Don't you ever find yourself reading those books. They look like they are financial books. They are, they are books orchestrated by demons. They will cause you not to fear the Lord and they will teach you how to manipulate people. By the grace of God, we carefully select books that we have read, that we understand that their principles are consistent with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Please read. Sit down this week. Get a new exercise book. Write my financial destiny. You have one on your dreams and visions. Write one on your finances. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.